Long years ago, formation of Earth took place, and many years later, humans were evolved, and soon after that was invented math. But now, why did this urge to invent math happen? I mean, we had to for counting and measuring things. Now, in order to count things like adding, subtracting, multiplying, and dividing, they developed various ways, and we call it as algebra. And when it came to measure things, they first tried to measure land. This need to measure land gave birth to other half of mathematics, which we call it as geometry, where geo means earth and metering means to measure. But this geometry means only measuring the land. No, it's far more beyond that, as we all know now. Geometry isn't about measuring things; it is also about proving certain statements. A Greek mathematician, Thales, was the first person to give a proof of a statement that a circle is bisected by its diameter. Pythagoras was one of his most famous pupils, who did an extensive work in geometry, which was continued till 300 BC. Now, at the same very time, around 300 BC, Euclid, a mathematics teacher in Egypt, was also working on geometry. Well, today we call Euclid as a father of geometry. He collected all the well-known facts and formed his famous treatise, which was named as Elements. Elements was divided in thirteen parts, and each of the part is called as a book. All of his books have a great impact on today's world of geometry, and in this session we will learn that what Euclid did to change the world of geometry. So, without wasting further more time, let's learn Euclid's approach towards geometry and connect it with what we learn today as geometry. Euclid's approach towards geometry was an abstract model of the surroundings of that time. Now, you may wonder what an abstract model is. It means that it was all his thoughts just by looking at the surroundings, and it does not have any concrete existence or proofs. What is a point, a line, a surface, and various other things were derived just by looking at what's present in the world. A solid shape. Let's take an example of a cube. It has six surfaces. Each surface has four sides, and each side has two points. Right? In the way we moved down. We lose one extension each time. Solid shape is 3D, surface is 2D, line is 1D, and a point do not have any dimension. Euclid started his comprehensive description about his thoughts by 23 definitions in the book One of Elements. Don't worry, I'll not take you through each and every definition because they are too complicated and tedious to explain. But yes. We will look at a few of them to understand his thoughts. A point is that which has no part. It is as simple as it sounds. Let's see the next one. A line is a breadthless length, right? Isn't it? A line has only length and it does not have any breadth. The ends of a line are points. The edges of a surface are lines. A surface is that which has a length and a breadth only. A straight line is a line which lies evenly with the points on itself. This one may sound a little complicated, but it's not. It just means that on a line, the points are evenly distributed. Now let's see the last one. A plane surface is a surface which lies evenly with the straight line on itself. This is exactly like our previous definition. Lines are evenly distributed on a surface. If we see it in a little detail, even though everything looks so simple, still certain terms in the definition needs further more explanation. Like, if we see the first definition, it has a word part, but exactly what part are we talking about? Further in the second definition, there is breadth and length. Again, we are going to need definitions for these terms. Now, if we continue this process of defining terms. We may never be able to stop, so mathematicians decided and agreed to leave certain terms undefined. So the terms like a point, a line, and a plane are undefined terms in geometry. 
we can represent these things intuitively or we can explain them with various objects or physical models. Now, after these definitions, Euclid assumed some properties which were not to be proved. Now, you may ask why? We need a proof for almost everything in geometry, isn't it? Now, why these properties did not require any proof is because they were obvious universal truths. He divided these properties into two different types. One were the assumptions which were made strictly on the basis of geometry and the second one where the assumptions were based on in general mathematics and not specifically based on geometry. The strictly geometry ones are named as postulates and the others are known as axioms. Let's get started with some of the Euclid's axioms. So let's see what the first axiom says. Things which are equal to the same thing are equal to one another. It means that if A is equal to B and A is equal to C, then B is also equal to C. One example may help you to understand it better. So let's assign certain values to A, B and C. Now in here, A is equal to B and A is also equal to C. And it is very clearly visible that B will be equal to C. Right? Let's see the next one. If equals are added to equals, the wholes are equal. That is, if A is equal to B and C is equal to D, then A plus C will be equal to B plus D. Now we've got another alphabet here, D. Let's assign certain value to it. Uh, let's say 4 plus 4. So here if we substitute all the values, we can see that A plus C is equal to B plus D. And in a very similar way is our third axiom. If equals are subtracted from equals, the remainders are equal. That is, if A is equal to B and C is equal to D, then A minus C will be equal to B minus D. Things which coincide with one another are equal to one another. The whole is greater than the part. Things which are double of the same things are equal to one another. Now, this means that if A is equal to B, then 2a will be equal to 2b and the last axiom says that things which are half of the same things are equal to one another that is if a is equal to b then a by 2 will be equal to b by 2. Here we are done with Euclid's axioms. Uh, do you want to see what Euclid's postulates were? Don't worry we understand that it will be too heavy for you to understand all in one session. So, let's do a small recap of definitions of axioms of Euclid's that led to geometry to the way next level. And if you have any query, doubt or if you haven't understood certain part, do write to us. We would love to help you out. If you like this session, do hit the like button and do subscribe. Till then, keep watching, keep learning. Thank you.